Hey guys, um, sitting in my dining room with Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. How many of you guys can say that? Anyway, I am continuing with my Blu-ray collection. Um, yes, my movies run into my dining room. Um, I, they circle in my entire apartment um, in various movie racks that I've bought over the years as I've filled them up. But um, we're going to do my boutique Blu-ray labels. Um, I only started within the last year and a half, two years or so, so I don't have a ton of them, and I think I'm going to try to go through all of them, just for, um, just for shits and giggles. But anyway, let's, uh, dive in. Uh, I'm gonna start with, um, from Mondo Vision, Possession from 1981. This is probably my favorite horror film of the 80s, if, you know, among them at least, and, um, very strange, very abstract movie. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this one. Um, fairly famous, but um, Mondo Visions, all, all of their releases, to my, the best of my knowledge, are uh, done by Zawalowski. And unfortunately, this is the only one of his films that I've seen. I, I need to see more, but um, pretty cool movie. It, it's very, very hard to describe. It's, it's basically about a the total collapse of a relationship and all of the people that it affects. Um, if I had to boil it down, but it also has an octopus monster in it. And, um, yeah, it's really strange, a uh, very visual, um, movie, but yeah, I'm sure all of you guys have seen this movie, but it stars Sam Neill, who's always great. And Isabella Gianni also always wonderful. And, um, yeah, it's just a really good, uh, really good movie that's impossible to describe. But it's uh, it's not about possession in the um, like horror movie sense of the word. It's uh, more possession in the fact that you know certain people, when they're in relationships, they believe they own the other person. Um, but anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, these are my Code Red releases, uh, starting with. Emmanuel and the Deadly Black Cobra. This one was a bit of a disappointment for me. Um, I really, really love Laura Gemser. I think she is just stunning and talented and great. And there's something about her that um, is just very um, enigmatic and um, graceful. But um, I had just watched uh, Joe D'Amato's... Uh, Emmanuel and the Last Cannibals, and that movie is a lot of fun, and I was expecting something kind of along those lines with this, and this one's just a bit of a slog to get through. It's it's not bad, but it's just not as exciting as later uh, kind of sleazier Emmanuel movies would be, but um, I wouldn't recommend starting with this one at least. And then moving on is uh, The Devil's Express. This is a really cool hybrid between um, like martial arts films and uh, zombie horror possession type stuff. It's about these possessed zombie guys that are inhabiting the subways and this cool uh, martial arts guy here has to stop them. But this is a really crazy over the top movie and it is a lot of fun. So if you have not seen The Devil's Express, I very much recommend that one. Uh, moving on is One Dark Night. Uh, this is a really fun movie starring the lovely Mick Tilly, who I always adore. Except in The Big Chill. I'm not too fond of that film. But um, that's besides the point. Beside the point. Um, I can't believe I had never seen this film. Um, it, it's directed by Tom McLaughlin, the, the guy who did uh, Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives, which is my favorite of the Friday the 13th movies. And so when I saw stills from this and saw that Meg Tilly was in it and saw that Tom McLaughlin directed it, I'm like, how have I not seen this? But uh, it's cute. It's a lot of fun. It's basically just Meg, Meg Tilly um, is dared to stay the night in this mausoleum. And then this weird psychic guy comes back to life and he uses his powers to bring back the dead, kind of. Um, just a really unique, fun, colorful little movie. Really good for, I, I would have been a really great movie to watch as a kid, you know, during a sleepover or something. Kind of gives me those feels, but um, a lot of fun. I'd recommend it. 
And then um, next up is Savage Streets, starring the great Linda Blair. This is one of my favorites that she's been in. It's just a really good um, revenge exploitation movie. Um, funny enough is uh, this, I bought this in One Dark Night on the same day at Grindhouse Video in Tampa. So if you're ever in Tampa, uh, Grindhouse Video is an amazing place. But um, I picked those up there same day. But this was directed by Danny Steinman, who had directed Friday the 13th Part 5, uh, the woefully underrated um, Friday the 13th Part 5. I like it, so if you don't, nah. But anyway, I love that one. But um you know, I didn't anticipate to pick up two movies in a row directed by a different Friday the 13th um, director. But uh, this is just a, a really kind of mean-spirited movie, but I kind of like that because it just makes you want her to kill these guys even more. The revenge is so sweet, and Linda Blair is really cool in this. So, Savage Streets, I'm sure all of you guys have seen this. Next up is my only Scorpion release that I have. Um, I'm a big fan of Paul Nashe, uh, especially his werewolf movies with Waldemar Daninsky. Um, this was a really, really nice surprise. I picked this up that same day at uh, Grindhouse Video in Tampa. Um, I didn't anticipate to really love this as much as I did. Uh, I'm not a huge, huge fan of mummy movies. Um, not one of my favorite subgenres. But uh, this is one of the better ones I've seen. Uh, what I really like about it, I was wondering which direction Paul Nashi would take uh, with the mummy. But what he does is he takes the best pieces of every mummy and blends them together. So you have the uh, intelligent sorcerer played by Boris Karloff in the original mummy. But he's mixed with the lumbering Karis of the other mummy movies to basically make the ultimate mummy. Uh, best of both worlds. Um... But this is a really fun, cool, gothic horror movie. Um, one of Paul Nashi's best and probably my favorite mummy movie with the exception of the Hammer uh, Mummy from 1959. So if you're just getting into Paul Nashi and Spanish horror, this is a very strong contender uh, for films you should probably watch. Uh, next up is Return of the Swamp Thing. This is my only MVD Rewind Blu-ray. Um, I'm going to be real. I strongly prefer this to the first one. I'm actually not a huge fan of uh, the original Swamp Thing uh, or even Wes Craven for that matter. I know that's a, that's a big, uh, big deal to a lot of people, but um, I really like this one though. It's, it's more over the top and more comic book. Um, it's sillier but I find that it's more consistent. It's more visual, too. Um, there's a lot of cool, like, fog and um, a lot of attention to detail in the sets. And the uh, Swamp Thing suit is a major improvement over the original. Uh, he looks really cool. But it's a far cry from the Alan Moore comic, of course. But as its own thing, it's, it's a fun, cool monster romp. Um, I enjoy it quite a bit. Okay, guys. Now I am moving on to my Arrow video. This is um, Blind Woman's Curse, starring the wonderful Meiko Kaji. Uh, it's kind of a hybrid between the Yakuza film and Japanese horror film. It's really pretty to look at, and Meiko is uh, really great in it, as always. This is not one of my favorite of her films, though. I'll get to those. Um, I should have talked about Lady Snowblood in my uh, Criterion videos, but I'll make up for it because I have a lot of uh, Meiko Kaji's films on the way. But I'm going to move on. Next up is uh, Day of Anger, starring Lee Van Cleef. Uh, I have a saying, when it comes to Italian westerns, you can't go wrong with any of them with Lee Van Cleef. I've never seen him in any of these where they, he's not amazing, and the movies are usually really good. But this was a really nice surprise. Um, there's so many twists and turns with his character in this film that it's just constantly um, very interesting. And it also has a really cool uh, Riz Orlani score. Uh, very memorable. It was reused, of course, in um, Django and Chain, along with a, a lot of other things, because Tarantino likes to reuse movies, um, music from movies that I, I like a lot more. Uh, 
But um, yeah, if you like like that type of film, um, or if you like spaghetti westerns, um, this one is a um, hell of a lot of fun. You can't go wrong. Uh, next up is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Osborne. Uh, Valerian Borschwick, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He made a bunch of erotic films and a lot of art films. And this is actually my favorite of his movies. It's um, decidedly less sleazy than some of his films. But uh, it's a really weird uh, feminist, surprisingly feminist take on um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, about the relationship between um, Dr. Jekyll and his new bride and her newfound, like, kind of feminist attitude. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really cool movie. Surpri very much surpri surprised me because I was expecting something very different with, from it. But um, pretty cool movie. Very visual. Um, his stuff is always very visual. Anyway, uh, Cemetery Without Crosses. This was, um, I believe, written by Dario Argento. I don't know how much of his script actually ends up in the film, but uh, fairly decent uh, spaghetti western. Not one of my favorites and not one I would recommend starting with, but it's not bad. Cemetery Without Crosses. I'm kind of brushing by these a little bit. Uh, next up is Valerian Borschwax, uh, The Beast. Um, this one actually is so weird. I have a long history with this movie. Um, I first heard about it in Movie Gallery, which was a uh, family video store, had this um, catalog of upcoming films. And this was in it back in the VHS days, and I could not believe it. You know, I was like 12, 13, and I was reading about this movie, The Beast, involving um, a woman's relationship with a beast man. Um, that's only a small part of the film, but I had heard about it just for years. It just stuck in my head, and it, it's um, it's a lot more arty than I thought it would be, but um, worth watching, <laughs> worth watching just to say you've seen it. But um, I prefer the uh, the other one I have of his, uh, Doctor Jekyll and Miss Osborne, over this one. But worth seeing just to say you've seen it because it's very unusual. I still need to get Immoral Tales. Um, anyway, this is uh, William Girdler's uh, Sheba Baby. Uh, Pam Greer, who I idolize. She's just always wonderful. Um, this isn't one of the better films. Uh, I prefer the films that she did with Jack Hill. Um, but it's it's fun enough. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of the black exploitation movies with Pam Greer. You're always going to have a good time. Um, next up is Larry Cohen's The Stuff. This is a really, really, really fun movie. It's a staple of the old mom and pop video stores. I'm sure all of you guys have seen this at one point. Um, stars Michael Moriarty, uh, who is just never ceases to amuse me. I just love anything with Michael Moriarty in it. Uh, no one plays like a kind of slimy guy like him, although he's a little bit cleaner in this. I just, I always go back to the way he's depicted in um, uh, Q the Winged Serpent, uh, where he's just the worst human being possible, but he's just so good at it. And this, he's, he's very sly and very fun, but um, it's about killer yogurt. And I've been very tempted, maybe after this COVID-19 thing wraps up, uh, to print out some labels and start putting the stuff labels all over... Um, different yogurt packages at Walmart at night and see who will eat the stuff. Okay. One of my favorite Giallo movies, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times. Um, really, really good uh, Bruno Nicolai score um, that will get stuck in your head forever. Um, this is another one I don't really want to spoil. I don't want to talk about too much. Um, it does star, um, I'm trying to remember her name, that's uh, gonna bother me, but she's, uh, oh, Barbara Boucher, yeah, duh. Uh, Barbara Boucher, who's also in uh, Don't Torture a Duckling, and uh, she's really great in this. Uh, she's also a Bond girl, but um, sort of a Bond girl. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is a uh, really, really fun 
giallo movie with some cool visuals and uh, I really like the iconic look of um, the Red Queen running as her cloak you know flows behind her it's a really cool visual I believe uh, it just kind of reminds me of um, the Phantom of the Paradise I was actually going to say Edgar Wright was inspired by that for um, a scene in Hot Fuzz but that was actually the Phantom of the Paradise um, pardon me Okay, next up is The Return of the Killer Tomatoes. This is a superior sequel. It, I, I think it is anyway. I, I prefer this one. This is the one I grew up with. This is the one that the cartoon was based on. Um, it has fuzzy tomato in it. What more can you ask for? Um, oh, and the, the first one starring John Astin as uh, Dr. Gangrene. So uh, John Astin's always a lot of fun. Return of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm I'm torturing you. I just feel like they have such great cover art that I don't want to move out and miss out on them, uh, showing them to you guys. Um, next up is uh, Ken Russell's Crimes of Passion. This is a really really cool movie. Uh, Anthony Perkins is always good. I was just thinking about this the other day. How Anthony Perkins. Uh, Everybody just knows him as Norman Bates from Psycho, but he gave so many wonderful performances and varied performances, although this one he does play a weirdo in this, but he's just so damn good at it. Um, but it stars Kathleen Turner, and uh, she plays a prostitute, and it's about a guy who falls in love with her, and um, she's a lot of fun, and it has a really cool score by Rick Wakeman. Uh, Ken Russell was just... He did all kinds of movies. He was really all over the place, and it, he's a, a filmmaker that's just really, really hard to pin down. Um, but I like all of his films, and this one, um, this one's worth checking out. All right, next up is the Bloodstained Butterfly. This one's uh, pretty interesting. It's not one of my favorite Giallo movies, though. Um, I need to actually revisit this. Uh, I remember it did have some twists and turns that were really surprising, though. But it's it's just not as visual as I, I usually like from my Jalo movies. And the score um, didn't hit me as much. But um, I don't know. Maybe I need to revisit it. There have been some films where I've been kind of disappointed by it. And then, you know, you revisit them and you end up liking them more. So this is on my stack of things I need to check out again. That cover is amazing, though. Um, next up is uh, Slugs. This is one of my favorite films from the video store era. This is a really, really fun movie. Uh, it was directed by the guy who did Pieces and um, what is it? Pod People. Um, I can never remember his name. Juan Picard? Juan Simone? Juan Picard Simone, yeah. I know you guys are probably screaming at me. But, um, yeah, he also did Pieces. And this is probably my favorite of his films. This is just a really good monster movie. I'm kind of a sucker for nature on the loose type things. And there's some really good gore in this. This cover is also really awesome. I would love to have a poster of this. But, yeah, Slugs. It's a lot of fun. Next up is the only J horror film that I have on my uh, in my collection. This is uh, Dark Water, the original version, uh, Japanese horror film. Um, again, not one of my favorites. Um, this is another one in my stack that I I need to revisit. But I it is it's very visual. It's it's haunting. It's what you come to expect from like 2000s um, J horror. But um, I can't talk too much about it because I haven't seen it in a really long time. I've only seen it the one time, so I do need to revisit this one. But I remember it being very lovely, just uh, not one of my favorites. Uh, next up is The Initiation. This is a 1984 uh, slasher movie um, starring uh, Daphne Z Zuniga. Um, it's pretty fun. I enjoy it. It's, it's not my favorite or anything. I love this cover, though. Um, there's another alternate cover that I'm not going to show you, but um, it has a penis on it, and I never noticed it until uh, uh, Richard from Hello, This is the Doom Show pointed it out, and now I can never unsee it. But um, this is not one of my favorites, but um, it's worth watching if you like, like mid-80s slasher movies. Um, it's kind of fun. 
It takes place in a mall on pledge night. Next up is a joint effort from um, Ricardo Freda and Mario Baba, Kaltiki the Immortal Monster. This is a pretty interesting little movie. It's kind of like The Blob, but Italian and a little bit creepier, a little bit more gruesome. Uh, this is another one I really need to see again. I've only seen it the one time and when I first bought it. and uh, It's on my stack of things to revisit, but I, I remember the um, effects being particularly grisly for their time period, uh, with people being dissolved in uh, Kaltiki's uh, sludgy grasps. But anyway, kind of fun. Next up is Wolf Guy, starring Sonny Chiba. This one was another bit of a letdown, and I really hate seeing, saying that. I'm a big uh, Sonny Chiba fan. Um, and when I heard Sonny Chiba werewolf movie, I got really, really excited. And it does not deliver on that premise. It's, it's more of a cop, like Yakuza type film. But, um, which is not a genre I'm overly fond of, admittedly. But, um... I need to revisit this and give it a fair shake because um, I think, you know, sometimes, like I said, you go into a movie, you expect one thing, and then, so I need to revisit this one uh, sometime, but Wolf Guy, uh, this cover art is really great, but yeah, just not my favorite Sonny Chiba movie. I, I, I like the uh, Street Fighter movies a lot more, but it had some unique things in it, though. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I need to revisit it. Um, it's one of my favorite Lucio Fulci films, Don't Torture a Duckling. I really, really don't like this cover because it kind of spoils the movie. Um, this is a really, really haunting movie. Um, at the time, when I first saw it, I kind of had this preconceived notion of what Fulci was. I, I thought he was a gore guy because I'd always see, I'd seen his gore films. And so I was really expecting Don't Torture a Duckling to be that. But it's so much more emotional and, and just bleak and just oppressive than I thought it would be. Um, and it bothered me for a very, very long time after watching it. Uh, the score by, uh, I believe it was Ritz Orlani did the score for this. Um, I can't find it, but yeah, I believe this was Ritz Orlani. I'm drawing a blank because I'm getting kind of tired, but... Um, yeah, the score for this is just, it just, it, it bores down into your soul. It's one of his best scores, and uh, it's very, very emotional. Um, and the identity of the killer is extremely disturbing, but uh, it's just really great mystery. Next up is uh, JD's Revenge. This is a really, really fun black exploitation horror film about a... Um, Young college football player, really, really likable guy, played by Glenn Turman, who gets possessed by the spirit of a gangster from the 20s or 30s. And so he starts dressing like that and talking in the lingo. Uh, Glenn Turman is just always great in everything he's in. But um, what's funny is uh, he's, when he gets possessed, he is so over the top. Uh, that's kind of in a way that's kind of scary, but also hilarious at the same time. Um, yeah, this is a really, really cool movie, and I can't recommend this enough. If you like like black exploitation movies, and you thought you've cycled through all of the black exploitation genre films like uh, Sugar Hill and Blackula, uh, and you haven't seen JD's Revenge, I definitely recommend it. It's so much fun. I I love it. Um, Next up is the Bloodthirsty Trilogy, um, The Vampire Doll, Lake of Dracula, and Evil of Dracula. These are really cool. It's a um, Japanese attempt at doing hammer films, uh, but the look of them, it's almost like they out-hammer hammer in a certain way because you have colors that are so vivid that um, they almost remind me of Bava. Although... Uh, Brides of Dracula, the second Hammer Dracula movie, has vivid colors like that, too. It's very vibrant, but um, this movie just takes that and he cranks it up to 11. So it's like European gothic mixed with Japanese sensibilities, and um, it's really, really cool. Um, you guys should check those out. All three of them are really great. Um, next up is Horrors of Malformed Men. It's kind of a um, Japanese take on the island of Dr. Moreau a little bit, 
Um, I was a bit let down by this when I first saw it, but then about a year ago I rewatched it, and uh, it's one that's really grown on me, and it keeps going in and out of my list of favorite horror films. Um, it's a bit of a slow burn, but man, there's so many disturbing connotations in this movie. Once, uh, once the main character does get to the the uh, island in which the film takes place, um, very visual. There's some weird set pieces in it that uh, that'll really stick with you, but um. Yeah, Horrors of Malformed Men, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm going to be saying pretty cool a lot, I, I apologize. Um, I'm actually going to stop with this shelf because this is taking longer than I anticipated. Next up is uh, John Landis's Schlock. Um, a lot of people dismiss this one, but um, sometimes you can t uh, see what a uh, director's and my flash just died, so I really, really have to wrap this up. But uh, a lot of directors... Um, their visual style um, is right there right from the gate and um, like his writing and everything. And this is pure John Landis um, right out of the gate. Uh, it's a lot of fun and there's a really cool ape suit with um, Rick Baker in the, in the ape suit. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, next up is the Sister Street Fighter collection. Um, I actually like the Sister Street Fighter movies a little bit more than the Street Fighter movies. Uh, they're a lot of fun. Sonny Chiba's in them. Um, they're a lot more violent than you would expect. Um, cause I was expecting them to just be kind of straight up action movies when I first saw them because I, I'd seen these before I saw the Street Fighter movies and there's a lot of gore in them that I was really not expecting. So they're, they're really wild. And, um, if you like martial arts films, uh, you could do a lot worse. Um, and then... Next up is uh, William Friedkin's Cruising, starring Al Pacino. Really controversial film. Um, Al Pacino's really great in it. It's a really, really haunting movie um, about the club scene in the early 80s. And um, has this almost documentary guerrilla style to it. And um, has an ending that will linger with you for a very, very long time. But... Uh, not one of Friedkin's better movies, but it is very interesting. And uh, if you haven't seen it, um, definitely recommend Cruising. Uh, Pacino's really great in it, too. Uh, moving on to the uh, this big boy, this uh, big box set, uh, Female Prisoner Scorpion, complete collection uh, with uh, Female Prisoner Scorpion, uh, Jailhouse 41, Beast Stable, Grudge Song, um, and then a cool booklet. But uh, all four of these are really good. I actually watched all four of them in one sitting because um, when I got it, they were just so awesome. that I just wanted to um, watch one right after the other. My favorite of the bunch is probably Jailhouse 41. That's the most surreal and abstract of all of them. It has just weird visuals. All of them do, but that one just gets the weirdest of all of them. But um, yeah, definitely watch them. They star uh, Mako Kaji of Lady Snowblood. Um, and she's just wonderful. And speaking of, uh, this is my last arrow. This is the Stray Cat, uh, Stray Cat Rock collection. These also star Mako Kaji. Uh, they're a series of five girl gang video, uh, girl gang movies. Uh, I believe they fall into the genre called Pinky Violence, which I haven't seen a lot of that genre. So I actually don't know what I'm talking about with them, but these are a lot of fun. Um. Again, I, I just really, really like Meiko Kaji, and um, her songs are in the movies, too, and her songs are just lovely, so um, they're a big draw for me. But anyway, my battery is about to die, so I should have charged, but I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, I'll do another shelf uh, either later today or tomorrow after I've charged my stupid phone. Anyway, um, have a good one, guys, and take care.